What's going on, Solid Steppers? What's up, Take the Tights? This is Miss Ward coming to you from 98 East Emerald Coast Parkway, Highway 98. Right now, I'm going to roll up in Walmart, but I'm sitting here listening to uh, one of my coaches because I make sure I have a number of coaches because I do not know anything to keep me on point. And I'm listening to uh, her interview another gentleman, and I'm just thinking about circles. I'm always talking to you guys about roundtables. I had one of my roundtable members call me and they were asking me about SEO and things of that nature. I immediately connected them with somebody I trust to do that specializes. And I have two or three people that really know what they're doing. They're not taking advantage of people. They explain it in layman's terms and then they look at your budget and make it happen. Now I'm very, I'm, I, I guard these people closely because you're not about to pimp none of my friends. It ain't happening, you know. And so I'm saying all this to say that. Do you have a circle of heavy hitters? Do you have a circle of people who are in experts in areas that you may not be in, but you can trust them with your life? Because not only do they state it, they know it, they just stay on top of their game. And I'm so blessed to have that circle. I got a circle of people that anytime I go to them, I know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bag, man. I know that they know what they're talking about. I make sure I cash out them and all this other stuff because we understand that our circle ain't shit free, or we have some type of reciprocating relationship. So when we're making these exchanges, man, let me tell you something. It is summer. Ain't nowhere to park. These people is down here. They coming straight to the Redneck Riviera to get it in people out of school i'm saying all this because when i tell you it is off the chain up in here it really is i'm trying to slide in walmart and slide the hell out on my way to my last customer but what i'm saying people is do you have a group of people that you trust a group of people that you know um are gonna have your back no matter what let me flip this around so what's going on people this miss ward I just want to know, do you have a group of people you trust? Do you have a group of people that you know that they're going to make it happen? And I'm blessed because I do. And I'm saying all this to say, anytime I'm on the road, I turn my vehicle into a seminar, meaning that anything I want to catch up on, anything I want to learn, anything I need to keep at the frontal part of my brain so that I know what I need to be focused on, I ain't sitting here listening to Drake and Kendrick Lamar. I'm not listening to Diddy's situation. I'm not listening to nothing because that stuff ain't it, it is only entertainment. If I want entertainment, I'd be watching the final season of The Crown and getting and staying up to date on Briggerton. In fact, I know that uh, the second half of the season I think is starting this week, so I'll catch that maybe this weekend or while I'm in my garden. But what I'm saying is, your time is valuable. Your relationships are even more valuable because they cut down on what you have to do when it comes to something you're trying to accomplish. If you don't have relationships with people who make your life easier, who bring something to the table and people that you're proud to call your friends. See, there's a lot of people out here. Like I was just telling uh, the guy at the round table earlier, I was like, look, bro, I let people think I fell off. I'm so damn quiet, but the quieter I get, the more I make. You know, the reality is this is called focus. If I'm moving, I'm going to move a certain way because I'm responsible. I understand that anytime I spend time doing something that is not helping me, my brand or my business, I'm hurting me because I'm putting all this stuff in place so I can have assets because America is asset based. If you ain't figured that out and that's coming from one of my coaches, you can catch on the video. She's always saying it's an asset based society. That people accumulate assets so they don't have to work. The assets make the money for them. And that is my whole focus. Everything I'm doing, I'm saving more than 50%. I'm putting stuff away so that I can, when it's time to make a hit, I can just go and pay cash. I ain't got to worry about investing. I ain't got to worry about no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mortgages or none of that. I'm just paying cash. I'm just, uh, and I'm blessed because I'm in these markets that are absolutely exploding. And they're being discovered. And I'm already here. See, let me tell you something. It's many of us that live in neighborhoods and places that we couldn't appreciate. And now that they're being gentrified, everybody got a problem. Don't hate, get on the damn bandwagon and figure it out. 
because you have an access to inside game that a lot of people don't. And this is what I'm telling you. Look, take stock of everything you have to be successful. And you got to be able to go outside your box and let other people teach you how to maximize those opportunities. I sit here and I look, sometimes I peep in the Facebook group. I'm not very active, but I just kind of sit back in the sidelines and look because I'm done giving advice, especially for free. Because I realize a lot of stuff you got to learn by just hard knocks and that some people you can't tell them nothing. A lot of people kicking tires and they don't want to break. They don't want to make the difficult decisions because one thing you will learn in business is this. A lot of decisions you make, you make different decisions when you are in the heat of the moment, when you have hands on experience and when you're dealing with it day to day. When you are conceptualizing and you're not in the heat of that BS, you can think anything. You can have the best laid plans, but guess what? You got the best laid plans. God got a sense of humor. So I'm saying all that to say, get into the game, whatever it is, whether it's the trades, whether it's appliance repair, whether it's refrigeration, HVAC, it's too much training out here. And then on top of that, if you smart about it, and I'm going to keep it real. If you smart about it, like I see a lot of people going into commercial. Let me tell you something. All these commercial companies are hiring. The guys that special for specialize in the beverage machines are hiring. The um, there are major companies I think is Smart Care that covers everything from the express coffee makers all the way up to refrigeration, specialized refrigeration racks. Let me tell you, something. these people will train you with just a little bit of appliance repair and mechanical knowledge you have. Get in there and learn that game, and then learn how to parlay it on the weekend. Make sure if you're going to go back into the field in appliance repair, you better be checking 401k plans. Don't just work for anybody. Look at the flexibility of the schedule so you can still run your, your bag on the side. If it was me, shh, I'm trying to tell you. I always have options everywhere because I stay on top of the game. And the reason I stay on top of it is because I'm at a season in my life where failure has never been an option and it really ain't now. And if I miss something or don't do something properly, I'm going to get up and address it and hold myself accountable. We all need to get to the point where we understand wherever we are is because of the choices we made. I'm going to give you a prime example. I have not been in my work vehicle for almost now six, seven, eight, nine months, right? And this is a choice because it's not like I can't just go get some more debt. But because I'm all about assets, I don't want any damn debt. I want to make sure that I'm doing stuff properly. So, uh, Last year, someone hit my car, hit my vehicle, work vehicle. I think it was in November 2023. And so it went into the shop. And I can only, I'm sharing my experience because these are what, this is what I'm reflecting on. I put it in the shop. And it was like a whole bunch of drama because they wanted to total my car. But because I'm a tech, a ASC certified master tech on the automotive side, I already knew it wasn't total because I took pictures before I even went to the shop. I jacked it up, took pictures of the undercarriage, took everything, and I knew I wasn't total. So anyway, I had to go through that whole thing. So we had to move it to another shop. I took it to one shop, had all the suspension done, and then I brought it to the body shop. So that was a whole process. So I probably got my vehicle back there for the Maybe in, in May. That's a long time. So then I'm uh, in the car driving, doing what I got to do in my vehicle. Next thing you know, I get a check into light. And because I'm a tech, you know how we do. I got a scanner. I scanned, they saw the code, did the research, and this is related to an engine issue they're having, which is on a recall. So reached out to the dealership, let them know the code was there, made sure I didn't clear the code. So let me tell y'all something. Stop clearing these damn codes because it'll cost you some money sometimes. Don't clear codes because... A lot of times the dealership needs to see that code in order for you to get things handled. So I told it to the dealership. They replaced my engine. No charge. Now, of course, my vehicle's in mint condition because I'm a tech and I'm anal because I'm on the road. So I'm doing full synthetic, high mileage oil changes. All this is on CarMax. My suspension has been changed. I got top of the line Michelin tires. All my stuff, brakes is on point. Brand new suspension strut shots because at the end of the day, it's a write-off. I'm doing it on the work vehicle, and I'm not going to get stuck anywhere. So we got that. Now, once that happens, I drop it off. 
you know, I have it told. They take the car in, so they had already prepared me for two to three months. Engine had to come from Korea, blah, blah, blah. So I was prepared because I'm in my slider right now. Toyota Matrix, 1.8 Corolla engine. Right now I'm sitting at 215, and I could have easily been in a rental. But why pay that when you have it's another vehicle for the company? It's a write-off. I paid $3,000 for this, maybe $3,500. Only thing I did was, when I first got it, it was a problem with the radiator. It took me 30 minutes to change it. I mean, you got to make, see how God bless you with all these skills. I have these skills because all my life I have been in the trades, but I also am highly intelligent. And I don't apologize for either one. So getting back to what I'm saying, I just go back last week to pick up my vehicle. They say it's ready on Friday. I go pick it up. Guess what? AC not working. I don't hit a compressor coming on. And I'm irritated. So I go back and I'm real cool with it. I said, look, they said, well, was it working? Yes, it was working when it came in. So me knowing, having an automotive background, I didn't want to leave the premises. So I just left my vehicle. Went, they called me back maybe four days later and say, okay, that needs a compressor. Now, because I know the condition it was in when it went in, I know that either when they took the compressor off, they didn't re reinstall it properly. It could be an issue with the harness, could be a blown relay, fuse or whatever. But I said, okay, I'm just getting a second opinion because I don't care. I work in appliance repair. We got the bag because I strategize my jobs, everything properly. So I make more than enough and I thank God for that. I take no credit. So pick up the vehicle today, take it to my trusted place, trusted shop that I trust in the area over in Fort Walton. Talk to Dan. Dan got me locked. So I'm going to leave it with them and see what's really going on. I'm also going to have them inspect the all the insulation for the engine. Because, you know, to pull an engine, you got to disconnect everything. And I don't want to be on the road and shit come start, start coming loose. Excuse my language. Now, why am I going through this long story? I'm going through this long story to show you one thing. Number one, everything you have been through in your life. Every experience, every job you didn't like, every experience you had on that damn job that worked your nerves, but you still was the best one on that job, regardless of everybody else, that helps me today. I can walk into any facility, and whether it's automotive, electrical, plumbing, whatever is related to the trades, I can handle it. And because of my business acumen, I know how to act and balance it out. Did I show my ass at Kia? No. I just handled it and I got backup. So it's a win-win. So what I'm trying to explain to y'all is this. Always have a backup plan. I got backup vehicles. I paid cash. Yeah, I could have kept up with the Joneses because see, the old Miss Ward, you know, I've always had BMWs, Mercedes, all that other stuff because I worked in automotive. Why would I not have it? You feel me? I mean, this is what I do. But when I got into appliance repair, it was different because I had to deal with the cost of a business and the resources and making sure that everything was being funneled back into business, but also so it could be a tax write-off or I could uh, justify the purchases. So I'm saying that to say in the past, I would have just went and got another vehicle. I just would have went. I know I could, you know, my business would qualify for a vehicle. But that would be more debt. My goal is to be as debt free as possible in business. Now, I'm not saying debt is bad, but as long as the debt is debt that is um, applicable to the business and where it's going to bring you ROI. So when I make a debt, I want to know what my return on investment is going to be, whether wherever I'm spending the money, whether it's parts, whether it's streamlining systems, whatever that is, I'm making sure that I have ROI in the past. In a different season, I would have just got another vehicle. But do you think I want a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar truck and a van, and then I gotta pay that off and deal with that drama? No. What I want to do is I'm gonna continue to use what I have, and if I'm gonna buy something, I probably go pick up a Forerunner, maybe two twelve, two thousand fourteen, or F one fifty like my boy David, two thousand fourteen Ford F one fifty. You know, all my friends, we buy stuff like that because we move different in 2024 uh, than we did in 2019. See, 2019, I had trucks. They were all leased to Enterprise, but I also had a great deal. I had the and I had what they call a COVID deal because at the time nobody was renting. So I was able to get my trucks for 400 when it topped out to a thousand dollars a month. That's nothing when you got a Sprinter van. That ain't nothing. But, you know, at the end of the day times change and you got to change with it 
and I understand it. I knew every business I was using was going to balance out and those fees are going to change. And I didn't cry about it. I made sure that I made sure my business is profitable. And y'all got to realize that when you first start a business and I'm, I'm having this conversation because these are the questions I get. When you have a business, you're going to spend money in the beginning and you're going to lose money. You're going to lose money through the process because you're learning. That is the price. Losing is what's called a lesson when you learn and gather ROI from the lesson. So now I don't make those decisions. Yeah, it's, I don't have a situation. When I first started, I was dealing with a whole other level clientele where I had to show up because I was competing with a certain corporate level client that had an image and these were Fortune 500 companies. So I understood what I, how I needed to look, what my uniforms and what my vehicles needed to look like in order for me to be in Excel in that arena because I was competing directly with them because I found out where the holes was in their armor and wherever the holes were in that Fortune 500 armor, armor I made sure my company excelled. So I didn't have to have a lot of customers. My ticket averages were high. I was dealing with premium customers with discretionary income. And so as I started to watch everything open back up and change, I had already did the data research for emerging markets. And people be like, well, you learned all of it. Kyle. Look, you learned this. Let me tell you something. YouTube University is the best place to go. And you got to have a plan. And you got to realize so many people talk so much smack about me covering multiple states and what they didn't understand from my previous travels being in corporate america i had so many points for hotels flights i didn't have nothing to worry about i was good this was stuff i stacked up for years i utilized that then on top of that because i structured my business as a true business entity financially i was able to do that now did i have some issues along? of course i did because whenever you're learning you're gonna balance you got to balance it out. But what I did was I went into underserved markets. I dominated those markets and I made a ton of money. And now I was able to take care of any previous debt, you know, and invest in the future, invest in myself. And that's what you're supposed to do in business. The only reason I have a business is because I have always told people. And if you watch my videos, I always say this. My appliance repair business is because I needed a cash flowing asset. And this is what I consider my business. I make enough cash to invest in other areas. So eventually I can do this for fun. Let's just keep it real. And that's real estate, stocks, crypto, ETFs, you know, myself, education, training. Like I'm not going to really put because I'm not about putting my business out as far as what I want to do in the future, because the reality is is that I might have one plan, but God will definitely adjust it for what's best for him and what glorifies him. See, I ain't got no problem with talking about God. Because, see, people don't understand. If you think it's about you, you're an idiot. And I'm going to tell you, if you think that Miss Ward has been able to travel these backwoods and through these states and not be divinely covered, you're an idiot. If I would never take credit for my growth and development, because I understand grace and mercy. I understand favor ain't fair. Dog, don't make me start rolling, getting the holy roller in here. But I'm trying to tell you, at the end of the day, you have to be true to you. You have to order yourself steps. You have to love yourself. And you have to discipline and hold yourself accountable. The reason I have a garden is because when I go home, I'm able to commune with nature. I have a huge community garden that I built, and it was because it was a call on my life. I don't need all that, but I'm doing it because I don't know what's coming. I don't understand why it's on my heart. I'm not going to see him pretend. I'm not going to predict anything. All I'm saying is I'm, work, I'm working on my agricultural skill set because I, in my early life, I was really blessed. And this is another thing I'm talking about, how everything God brought you to, you can use today. When I was a very young woman, when I was a young girl, between the ages of, I'm going to say, five and ten i lived in south georgia in a little small town called morbin i lived in brooks county with my great grandmother and we had multiple acres we picked tobacco picked pecans even cotton we had horses pigs chickens everything and as a child i did all that with her 
And let me explain something to you about my work ethic. My grandma would get me up three, four o'clock in the morning. We'd be out there feeding the hogs, feeding the chickens, and in that field. And I swear, let me explain something to you. I would not trade that for anything in the world. That's why when people say, Miss Ward, how do you get up every day and grind? This ain't a grind to me. It is a privilege that I can get up daily in my right mind and my health. In the greatest country on earth where I can be and do and accomplish anything I want as long as I move my ass out the way. It ain't nobody outside of me. It's me. I'm the problem and I'm the solution. As long, and that's why I want my mind to stay sharp, which is why I eat the way I eat, live the way I live. I don't mess with nobody. Nobody don't mess with me. And I don't invite people into my space that I don't trust and who are not worthy. Because you have to protect yourself. Because some of us have a call on our lives that is bigger than you can imagine. We didn't ask for it. We were put here to do it. And that's what I'm trying to do. So with that said, Miss Ward loves you. Let me get back on schedule because I'm about to use y'all know I go on these tangents. But I love you in ways you can't imagine. I want you to have a great day. And I want you to never give up to stay focused and realize what is for you is for you. Don't forget it, y'all. Miss Ward signing off. Solid steppers. Take the Titans 2.0. I love you guys. Like, share, and subscribe, and share this with somebody. I'm sorry it took so long to get to this point, but when it comes down on me, I don't know when it's going to happen. I just made these videos because somebody needed to hear this today. In fact, I'm going to replay it for myself. Be blessed, y'all. Let's go get it.